What's up guys? Chopper Chris, Choppers and Paint here again. Today we've got a real short video for you. Remember the fender repair we just went over? Well today I'm going to sand and polish that to 3000 grit and buff it with two compounds to a show shine. I know you guys have been wanting to do this to your own stuff so today I'm going to show you how. Well, let's get at it. We're going to start wet sanding this with 2000 because the finish came out so slick. If you have a rough texture, sometimes I start with 1000, I'll graduate to 1500, and then to 2000. But today I have a nice sharp piece of 2000 grit sandpaper. This clear is very slick and I don't have much of an edge built up where I've painted the flame, so I'm going to go ahead and just save myself some time and block sand it with 2000. Make sure you got a bucket of clean water and your sandpaper is soaked, pre-soaked. Don't push down, just let the sandpaper do the work. Block it in a X shaped pattern. Now we're going to go over that with a little bit of 3000. Use this 3000 grit. A little pad. This will really make it buff up nice. You can go as fine as you want. But at some point, your rubbing compound is going to be more abrasive than the sandpaper. So I stop at 3000 with the, the compound that I use. It'll cut everything else out. Do a perfect finish. Can't feel any edges in those flames anymore buried under the clear. This bike has a lot of accessories. It has a big two passenger seat, big license plate bracket, a lot of light bars. The only place you'll really see this fender is right in this area. That's why I kept the flames right here. And for the same reason, I'm not going to worry about sanding the rest of the fender all the way flat. Just sand the areas that are going to be visible, the areas that catch your eye. Or you can sand it all.
that should do it. We'll go ahead and buff it with the rough compound. This is what you should be left with after you sand it. You can almost see the reflection already. No edges to the flames are fully buried under the clear. If the paint were to have any texture, you would see it in the paint. You can see here where I stopped sanding. Hard to see in the camera, but you'll be able to tell if there's a little bit of texture left. The camera won't quite pick it up, but like I said, I'm not going to sand past where the seat bolts. I'm not going to worry about this too much, getting it flat. Right here, from here to the bottom, this is where we're going to see it. These sides, they're going to be mostly covered up. They look pretty good. We're going to concentrate on this top area right here. We're going to polish that. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe below. It's going to help me support this channel and keep teaching and doing what I'm doing. Hey, you guys rock. Now we're going to start buffing this with the rough compound and my eggshell foam pad. I've got a variable speed buffer. what you want for something like this. Uh, something like a grinder with no speed control is dangerous. You want to be able to let off the trigger. You can burn the paint very easily. These buffers, so. Start slow, that's why it's good to go with the fine compound. Bench it out to 3000 or better and you won't have to buff as hard. It does most of the work for you. This is just gonna take the tiny bit of work to bring back to a shine because I've sanded it so fine. You just get your compound on there like that. You might want a helper to make sure that the part doesn't fly across the room unless you have a fixture like this that will hold it very sturdy. This stand is made for a fender like this so it will hold it pretty good. But uh, I've seen some parts fly across the room before. It's not, it's not fun. Here we go. This is what we want to do. Start off kind of slow. And you gradually pick up the speed once you get it starting to polish. mindful of the rotation of this buffer. Now it turns this way. You want this edge rotating off like this, not on like this. When you're on a corner, you want the pad rolling off of the corner. If you press with this side onto that corner, that pad rolling into that corner will burn the paint much easier. So just be mindful. When I'm on this side, I want to lean it so the buffer spins off of that corner. When I'm on this side, I want to lean it so the buffer spins off of that corner. spinning off of this corner not onto the corner I'm going to lean onto this side of the pad 
make sure it spins this way. spot where the compound almost burns into the paint not quite burnt you'll see a little marks take a little bit of anything wet and you get that right off before it burns into the paint I don't know if you can see that little mark right there and put a little bit more compound there and get that out the corners are where you're gonna wind up burning your paint it gets way hotter on the corners you start running out of compound, don't buff on the part too dry. That's when it'll burn. That spot came right out. Spots like this, they're just gonna be real tricky, you know, especially with a big buffer like this. This is really an automotive buffer or something like a car. I've used it for years. I'm used to it. Um, most of your motorcycle guys you'll see them using a much smaller palm sized buffer and that may be what you want if you're working on motorcycle stuff exclusively. Uh, again I've just I've had this tool for 20 years and I'm used to it. You know we can go ahead and stop once you get most of that shine back. Remember we're just roughing it. And we're roughing it right now, and this rough pad will definitely burn a lot easier than the finishing pad. The finishing pad I have is a smooth, tight pad. This is an alignment tool. Just make sure that the pad goes on the center of the back of the pad. We're going to move to Meguiar's Mirror Glaze number two, Fine Cut Cleaner. This is going to work good for our second buff. You just want to, doesn't take too much, but you don't want to buff it dry either. I like to put it on my hand and pat it around like that. Everybody does this stuff different, guys. So if you see somebody else doing it differently, uh, that's not because it's wrong or the right way. I'm a lot. A lot of what I do is self-taught. My dad taught me how to do this years ago. Never went to school for it. This is just how I do it. Here we go with the fine compound. All of these 
holes in the finger are good opportunities to burn the paint. So be mindful when that buffing pad goes over there. You could burn one of those edges. Those are covered up for the most part. It's not a big deal, but... starts bouncing around a little bit I'll just take my leg and brace it up against the corner of that fender to keep it from bouncing. If that fender starts bouncing on you the buffer will burn the paint when it's on the up bounce. Puts a little added fracture pressure against that pad that's all it'll take. Sometimes you spray the clear on and you stand back and you think, wow, that came out really slick. But nothing looks like a cut and polished paint job. It doesn't matter how slick it is. It just doesn't have that polished look until you wet sand and buff it. Look at that. Of course, there's water standing on it. What do you guys think about that shine? I know you can do this guys. Let's get out there in the garage, get those paint guns out. Let's do this. I want you guys to comment below and tell me what you're working on.